when you work with indigenous people, very often your perspective is changed. And you see things. Like you, you can fly. And you. You too. In fact, all of you can have your home floating between the mountain tops. You wake up in the morning, your everyday life is to jump out, glide into lush valleys, and you can be on top of the apple tree, picking all the, only the best apples, and you can hover over beautiful meadows, all the colors of the rainbow. Friendly dragons will fly there with you. And you can see a gemstone on a mountain top and just fly up and get it, bring it home to your loved one. You can do this. It exists. How would that change your view of the world? How would that make you see life? What would be your dreams? What would you worry about? Would you have any worries? I sense some skepticism here. This, uh, is it too wild? Well, so I brought some proof. I filmed the everyday life of a friend of mine. Have a look.
You believe me now? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the young man you've seen called himself uh, Hook. And uh, in his native tongue, there is no word for worry. And his native tongue is Austronesian in origin, because these are the Moken Sea Nomads now living off the coast of Myanmar, formerly Burma. But the Austronesian or Proto-Polynesian language comes from the great Austronesian expansion starting some 4,500 years ago and populating the Pacific and the Indian Oceans. So, probably his language is more than 4,500 years old. First time I met the Moken, um, I had small children still, and uh, they told me that they don't even have words for mine or take or I want, or no even. And I thought, these are the first words my children ever spoke. <laughs> so there is something interesting about this culture I need to explore. And of course, when you ask them why there is no word for worry, they can't give you an answer. So I started thinking of examples that I could uh, explain to them so that they would know what I meant. And an obvious one in those days was right after the big tsunami in 2004. So I said, the tsunami, that's a scary thing, right? And I learned they sing stories about the laboon, the big wave, to their kids. They tell stories amongst the teenagers and it includes how to detect the tsunami and how to avoid it. There are f different species of fish going to different levels in the water. There are animals retracting into the jungle. Um, you also have the receding water before the big wave comes. And what they do is they get into their boats, just go out at sea, and the tsunami is just an elevation. The power is unleashed when it hits land. And if they're on a beach, they never camp unless there's a hill or a mountain near the beach. So then it's a five-minute walk. So nobody died during the tsunami. Even if you were close to Moken, they saved you. So there's nothing to worry about in tsunamis. Well, um, you spend your whole life in a small boat made from one tree, one log, and then sailing out into the big ocean, and most of your time is spent there. There must be a lot of things to worry about there. But we're dealing with uh, 4,500 probably more design, which has been fine-tuned the whole way. So this boat is perfect for the waves you're in and for the life you're living. They even have, if you can see, they have the bulb, which we thought we invented for carrier ships and cruise ships in modern days. And to show how unique the design is, it has even three functions, we found out. Because if you extend the hull below the waterline, you don't need a deep keel. It has the uh, effect of a keel when you're cutting through the water, so you can go up in the wind. And when somebody is cooking or there's activities on board, you don't want to rock the boat too much. So it's also the stepladder for getting in and out of the water, of course. And the same goes for all the tools. There are, all the harpoons are specifically designed to target the species you want to catch. So they're in full control. What about bad weather and waves? Well, I've been out with Moken in, in rainstorms where you can't see more than a few meters from the boat out to sea. And the waves are big and it's all wet and it's splashing. But they put one person, man or woman, at the bow of the boat when you leave. So they feel and see the angle of the waves hitting the hull. So if this person doesn't fall asleep and remember the point of origin, he or she always know where you are. And usually you don't fall asleep during a storm, so that works most of the time. So anyways, they're, ah, they're floating then <laughs> on top of the world's largest fresh food market, 
with an unlimited budget. So, no worries there, I guess. The diving. Aha, that going into the deep, dark ocean every day, all day. Now, there should be something there. But then we have to remember there's a big difference between modern day scuba diving, where you take compressed air and you go into the water and you saturate your bloodstream with nitrogen. Meaning, if you don't do everything according to plan and schooling, then you can come up saturated when the pressure leaves, like opening a Coke can, there will be bubbles in your blood. So that's very dangerous. When you free dive, on the other hand, you fill your lungs, you go down, it's compressed, and it's back to normal when you get up. And incidentally, and this goes for all of us, we have a switch in the brain measuring the level of CO2 in the bloodstream. So when there's too much CO2 and you should start breathing again, you get the breathing cramps. And that's almost halfway only to when there is too little oxygen. So the challenge for modern free divers is they go past that threshold and they almost faint before they get out of the water. And Moken will never do that. And their threshold is much higher than us. And the Moken and all of us have a storage of hemoglobin in the spleen, which is released when you hold your breath. So it transports uh, oxygen much quicker through your body. And modern researchers have now been able to measure hormone production in the brain, and all of us, if we even think about water, hormones to equip you to hold your breath start being produced. So we are the monkey, if I can say, who left the forest when they retracted, went to the beach, because in the water you have no uh, predators and an abundance of food. This is where you need the straight legs, the flat feet, it's the kick for the swim, downward pointing nostrils, and hair only where you need it to rinse off your face when you come up. We even have a little extra slab of skin between our fingers. No other primates have this. What do you need that for? I wonder. So, I couldn't find the worry there either. But then there is modern times. Now, the people living on the mainland in Myanmar and also in Thailand, they want the beaches. And it started with overfishing, even with dynamite and cyanide, depleting of uh, the ecosystems, trawling the reefs, take long time to recuperate, and the food was getting scarce. And they took the mok and started putting them into villages on beaches near an army camp or in what they call national parks. And uh, they can't go to sea anymore. If they did, they have no citizenship. So they're free game. Anyone can do whatever they want to them, and there will be no punishment because they don't exist. They don't have a number pinpointing them to a location on land. This is what you need in modern times to be somebody. So I discussed this with uh, Noy, Hook's brother, and he said, Runar, we don't have a word for worry, but we do have a word for scared. Now we're scared. And then I thought, aha! I can make my film. I've cracked it. Worry is related to anticipation of something happening or, uh, to you in the future. But of course, when you get to that point, and it's actually going on, you're just scared. So the Moken way of life, living day to day, having everything you need, not having to think 
about the future too much. Don't need a word for worry. But if we want to improve as human beings, it is high time we start to find back to the embodiment of wisdom that we carry with us, which might have gotten lost on the way. And to have a better future, we should love the ocean and start protecting it. Thank you. Great audience.